Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Southern, Arctic. Oh, hi, don't mind me. I'm just singing a song we learned yesterday to help us memorize the five different world oceans. I thought it was pretty catchy. Today, I am going to read to you some really cool facts from a big nonfiction book that I have. It's called Ocean Animals, Who's Who in the Deep Blue, but it's a really big, thick nonfiction book with a, like tons and tons and tons of different facts. So today, I'm just gonna read to you this one chapter. It's called Oceans of the World, and if you look, it's divided into different sections. But I wanna tell you something cool before we get started. What's cool is that this book was published over 20 years ago. And so this book was actually published before scientists agreed on the Southern or Antarctic Ocean being a separate fifth ocean. That decision got made by scientists in the year 2000. So this book was published before then. So when we get to the part about the Southern Ocean, you're gonna hear about what life was like before people knew or had decided that the Southern Ocean was separate. We know anyway that all of the oceans are connected, but scientists just separate those oceans out in their mind because of the different characteristics of those oceans. Cool? Okay. So today, if you feel like just listening and following along, that's fine. If you wanna write down some information to help you remember it, I would suggest getting yourself started like this. I put a heading on the top of my paper that says five oceans facts. And then I just wrote number one, Pacific. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna write down one interesting fact about each of the oceans. It's starting with the Pacific because the Pacific is the largest. The song from yesterday listed the song, oceans from largest to smallest. So if you forget which one is the largest or the smallest, you can just sing the song. All right, here we go. Oceans of the world. It says, National Geographic recognizes one world ocean. But to simplify things, most geographers divide it into four oceans, Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, and Arctic. Now remember, this was published before they decided on the fifth ocean. Okay, so don't let that confuse you. Let's read about the Pacific. It says, the biggest ocean on Earth, the Pacific, hugs the planet nearly halfway around and contains almost half of its ocean water. Stretching along the west coast of North and South America and all the way to the east coast of Asia, the Pacific contains some 25,000 islands. It is also home to Challenger Deep, the deepest place on Earth and the lowest point in the Mariana Trench. So you guys could hear how that was just like chock full of details, right? There were two facts that I'm trying to decide between writing down. One is that there are 25,000 islands in the Pacific. That's really, really cool. It also says that it's home to the deepest place on Earth, which is the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench. So what I'm gonna write down, I wanna decide on one of those really super cool facts. I want to write that it's home to the Mariana Trench, okay? So what I'm going to do is write a complete sentence that just says, this ocean is home to the, and I'm noticing that Mariana Trench is capitalized because it's a proper noun, to the Mariana Trench, okay? So if you're writing this down at home, Here's a look. This ocean is home to the Mariana, M-A-R-I-A-N-A, -A -A, it's a capital M because it's a proper noun, Trench, capital T-R-E-N-C-H, Trench. Okay. Next it says Atlantic. So to get my notebook ready, I'm going to write the number two because it's the second largest ocean, and I'm going to write Atlantic. There we go. Atlantic, the saltiest ocean of all. The Atlantic stretches from the east coast of North and South America to the west coast of Europe and Africa. In the frigid northern part near Greenland, five story tall icebergs loom. Deep below the surface, about halfway between Europe and the Americas, lies the Mid Atlantic Ridge, the longest mountain range on Earth. It's as long as the Andes, the Rockies, and the Himalayas 
combined. Wow, pretty cool stuff, right? You know what I actually thought was interesting was that part right at the beginning about how it's the saltiest ocean of all. Does that mean that oceans have more or less salt in them than others? It must. I want to write down that fact because that seems really cool. I'm going to write, this is the saltiest ocean. This is the, mm. and then to look up saltiest, I could look back in my book if I have a hard time spelling that. This is the saltiest ocean on earth. Okay, this is the saltiest ocean on earth. All right, let's move on to number three. Number three, they have Indian. Indian. Here we go. Indian. Formed more than 65 million years ago, when present-day Africa separated from Antarctica, India, and Australia, this is the youngest of all the oceans. It curves around the southern coast of Asia and stretches from the east coast of Africa to the west coast of Australia. Powerful winds, called monsoons, blow from the southwest between May and October and from the northeast between November and April. So the part that I thought was really interesting there is that they have these special types of storms called monsoons. I'm going to write that down. This ocean has monsoons. This ocean has monsoons. If you're writing it with me, you can write M-O-N-S-O-O-N-S. -O 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 this ocean has monsoons. And then I'm going to add another sentence in case I forget. Monsoons are powerful storms. Monsoons are powerful storms. This ocean has monsoons. Monsoons are powerful storms. Okay, so now I'm going to get a little bit tricky. Are you ready? So in this song, uh, according to size, it goes Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Southern, Arctic. So even though in this book it lists the Arctic next, I'm going to skip that section and come back to it. And I'm going to read about what they call the fifth ocean with a question mark. And I'm going to write in my notebook, Southern, because we know that since 2000, that's called the Southern or Antarctic Ocean. Okay, there we go. It says, the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Oceans meet up around the continent of Antarctica. Some experts call this the Antarctic, Austral, or Southern Ocean. But is it really a separate ocean? Some say no, it's just a place where three other oceans meet. Others say yes, because the water has distinct currents and temperatures. So I want to write down that last part, because ultimately that was why the scientists and geographers decided to make the Southern Ocean a separate ocean, is because there's a really special current that goes around Antarctica. So I'm going to write, this ocean has special currents. This ocean has special currents, and currents is C-U-R-R-E-N-T-S, okay? Now, if you're not familiar with what currents are, that's basically the direction that the water is traveling. We'll learn more about that in our read-alouds later this week. Last but not least, number five, I'm going to write Arctic because that is the last ocean in terms of size. Arctic. Wrapped around the North Pole, the Arctic is the coldest of the oceans. It is so far north that the sun barely rises for much of the winter. Pack ice drifts in frigid currents, colliding and refreezing, creating a partial ice cover that can be more than 100 feet thick in some places. For a few months in the summer, the sun shines almost 24 hours a day, melting some of this ice. Also the smallest and shallowest ocean, the Arctic is almost completely closed off by the northern borders of North America, Europe, and Asia. 
So the part of that that I thought was really interesting is that in places on the Arctic Ocean, the ice can be more than 100 feet thick. So my sentence is going to say, the ice on this ocean, the ice on this ocean can be up to 100 feet thick. And I have to be honest, I'm putting an exclamation point because I think that's pretty exciting. All right, so as some follow-up work on this, you have a couple of choices for today. There are some links in our document to live cams of aquariums that you can watch uh, from all around the world and you can see different types of ocean animals to get ready for the rest of this week. You can also read from one of our books in our epic collection. So if you're really interested in the difference between these five oceans and you want to follow up more on that, there's actually a book about each of the different five oceans. So you have a couple of cool follow-up work options today. I'll see you back here tomorrow with more on the ocean.